Ladies and gentlemen, we left off Friday thinking, talking about Newton's three laws and forces, and I think we got this far, right? Yeah. Newton's third law? Okay. Did we talk about that mystical world of the Matrix and that movie? You remember? You ever seen that movie, The Matrix? Yeah, we dodged bullets. Okay, he's dodging bullets, he's bending around and stuff. Um, so, there's this scene. Um, it's pretty close to the very beginning of The Matrix. And this is, this is Trinity, and this is a cop who probably has about twice the mass of Trinity. And Trinity goes, kick the cop. And she jumps up and goes, wow, pow, and kicks the cop. And what does the cop do? Virginia, you've seen The Matrix. Yeah, kind of like weird. This is, it was a Hallmark movie for my generation, but it was also made before you were born. So, um, yeah, anyway, um, so the cop goes flying back, woo, flying back. Now, Newton's third law tells us that if every action there is an opposite equal reaction, then whatever force Trinity did on the cop, the cop did on Trinity, exactly. So if the cop goes, woo, flying back, what happens to Trinity? Woo, flying back, probably twice as far, or at least twice as fast. Collisions are the realm of momentum. Um, something we're going to be calling impulse, but we'll talk about that later. The important thing to realize is because of Newton's third law, for every action there is an opposite equal reaction, forces exist in pairs. So when you get a fight, you get in a fight, you go see the principal, or the dean in this case, you go see the dean, and you're like, what happened? His face hit my hand with an equal force that my hand hit his face. You're both responsible. Okay. This is where the normal force. This is where the normal force exists. Uh, what's the normal force? Who's experiencing a normal force right now? Hopefully, all of you, because you're all exerting a weight down on your chair, and the normal force is pushing up against your weight. If that isn't happening, then one of two things has to happen. You're either accelerating through your chair or you're accelerating off your chair. It doesn't look like any of you are accelerating either way. So that would mean your net force is zero. Net force is a phrase we use to look at two vectors or two or three vectors in opposite directions. The net is the difference between the two. So I'm exerting 950 newtons on the floor down. The floor is exerting 950 newtons on me up. So my net force is zero. Is anyone in the room experiencing a net force that's not zero? You are? Okay, where are you accelerating? Okay. <laughs> when we want to diagram all the forces that exist on a body, we use something called a free body diagram. So when we want to, exi when we want to diagram the forces that exist on a body, we use a free body diagram. So it's a model. And it shows forces. And generally, we want to break those forces into elementary parts. We don't want to care about all the minutia. We just want the main, main vectors. So take a look at this free body diagram. This is a car with a downward vector, an upward vector, a forward vector, and a backward vector. Go ahead and label the vectors on this free body diagram. forward vector, you can call thrust or force applied. We usually use F sub A, force applied. So what is the downward vector? Gravity. The fancy way of saying gravity is weight, FG. Okay, so weight, FG, pushing down. Again, we try not to use W for weight because we're going to be using W for something else. We're going to be using W for work. So it's easier to say F sub G. The upward vector, normal force, F sub N. The backward vector, friction force, 
F sub F, and the forward vector is the thrust or the applied force, F applied. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Now, if the weight of the car is 10,000 newtons, what is the normal force? Why do you say that? Yeah, it would not be a very effective car if it was able to fall through the ground. And most cars don't leave the ground. So yeah, if the weight pushing down is 10,000, then the normal force pushing up would also be 10,000. Nod your head if you're with me so far. Okay, next. What is the net force if the thrust, or the force applied, is 1,000 newtons forward, and the friction force is 500 newtons backward? 500 in what direction? 500 forward? How did you arrive at that number? You have two vectors in opposite directions, so one becomes negative, so negative 500 plus 1,000. 1,000 forward, negative 500 backward gives you 500 forward. Now, if that makes sense, and it seems like most of you got that, the question I have for you is this. Using everything you've learned, what is the acceleration of the car? Using everything you've learned so far, and the information you have here, what is the acceleration of the car? But there's a net force. If net force is zero, acceleration would be zero. If net force is not zero, acceleration cannot be zero. You just said the net force is 500 newtons. What is the acceleration? Remember Newton's second law? F equals ma? Do you have an F? Yes, you do. Do you have an M? Yes, you do. I don't see an M up there, Mr. Byers. Where do I get the mass? Yeah, 10,000 newtons divided by the gravity that produced it. Okay. So again, mass times acceleration due to gravity is weight. So if the weight is 10,000 newtons, then the mass better be what? 1,000. Exactly. So you got a mass, you got a force, F equals M, A. So what's A? Rearrange F equals M A, A equals over, yeah. 25? Yeah, 25. So F equals M A. Rearrange it, A equals F over M. F being the net force. Remember, it is the net force that does accelerating. How do you know? You're all exerting a force on the chair. The chair is all exerting a force on you. Are you accelerating? Even though there's hundreds of newtons being exerted on you right now, you're not accelerating because it is your net force that is zero. Net force zero, acceleration zero. Net force not zero, Acceleration not zero. 1,500 over 1,000 is normally 0.5. Yeah. So 0.5 meters per second. Question? I'm sorry, Sean, then, then you can. It is the unit of force. A, a Newton is the unit of force. And it's the unit for all the forces. It could be FG weight. It could be F, F friction. It could be F, B buoyancy. It could be any type of force will have the unit of a new. Okay. Go ahead. So, normal force here is the weight that you see. Newton says unit of weight. Absolutely. Weight is a force. Maybe we worked it out. So we want to use Newton's second law, at least as we understand it, that equals MA. And we want to use the net force, because it is the net force we care about. There's billions of forces that are going on right now. We only care about the ones that are unbalanced. So the net force is our 500 Newtons forward. forward. And 
that's going to equal our mass. Our mass is 1,000 kilograms because our weight is 10,000. Because our weight is 10,000, our mass must be 1,000. Because weight is mass times gravity. So if we're going to use 10 for gravity, we can take our mass, multiply by 10, and get our weight. My weight is 950 newtons. I know I have a mass of 95 kilograms. This block is 2 kilograms, so it has a weight of 20 newtons. A typical apple has a weight of a kilogram, or a mass of a kilogram, and a weight of 10 newtons. Capiche? Okay. So, when we solve for A, A becomes 500 over 1,000, or 0.5 meters. We move on. Uh, meters per second squared because A is going. Okay, thermal velocity. Let's do an experiment. Let's do a thought experiment. We're gonna go skydiving. We're gonna jump out of a plane. Who jumps out of the plane? Who? Who said that? Briggs did? There's someone in the back. Was it Kevin? Kevin. Kevin jumps out of the plane. Um, what's Kevin's weight? Six hundred. Not about right, but he's pretty spelt. So six hundred newtons. Kevin jumps out of the plane. He has a weight of him and his parachute of six hundred newtons. We got that from Kevin's mass of sixty multiplied by ten. So he jumps out of the plane. His weight was 600 newtons in the plane. What is it when he jumps out of the plane? The same 600 newtons. His weight hasn't changed. As he plummets to his depth, will his weight change? No. His weight will stay. He's got a, he's got a parachute. He's fine. His weight will stay 600 newtons. Make sense? Okay. But here's the thing. We've always been talking about air resistance. Ignore air resistance. Ignore air resistance. Ignore air resistance. What if we don't? Air resistance is a function of three primary things. Speed, how fast you're going. Faster you go, more air resistance. You know this, driving down the freeway, there's a lot more air. You put your hand out and like, whoa, there's a lot of air pushing on my hand. So speed, profile, basically uh, the shape that, that the gravity sees. So the shape. So this is why sports cars, they would make their profile very small. Cut through the wind. An arrowhead is very small at the point. So we want this profile. So the bigger your speed is, the bigger your air resistance is. The bigger your profile is, the bigger your air resistance is. And material, or um, just that, just straight friction. A ball covered in felt is going to have more air resistance than a ball covered in glass. Make sense? OK. So Kevin jumps out of the plane. He's got a weight of 600 newtons. As he starts speeding up, something interesting is going to happen. When he jumps out of the plane, with what acceleration will he fall? 10 meters per second. Because he has a mass of 60 newtons. His weight of 600 newtons is acting on a mass of 60 kilograms. 600 divided by 6, you have 10. 10 meters per second. But as he falls, he speeds up. And we're going to ignore the, the profile and the friction and just go with speed. As he speeds up, what happens to his air resistance? It starts going up, 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 up. Air resistance is a form of what -tion? Friction. Friction is a force. So as he speeds up, he has a weight pushing down. And his force pushing up is getting faster and faster and faster until he can't go any faster. The point at which he cannot fall any faster, he's going so fast that his drag up is equal to his weight down is called terminal velocity. Terminal velocity is the speed at which there is so much drag, the drag pushing up and the, the weight pushing down are equal. Why is that important? Well, when you have a force
force pushing up and a force pushing down that are equal, you have a net force of what? Zero. And when you have a net force of zero, your acceleration is zero. And when your acceleration is zero, your velocity is constant. So that's what happens. You jump out of a plane, woo! You're hitting with, you're hit with all this air. You have all this air resistance. After a short time, you're going so fast, you have hit terminal velocity. The upward drag is equal to the downward weight. You can't go any faster. Does that idea make sense? OK. Then something interesting happens. In the movies, when someone pulls a parachute, where do they go? They go up. Do they really go up? No. What really happens? They slow down, and the cameraman keeps going down. So it appears from the cameraman's point of view, the person went up. But they slow down. Why do they slow down? Their shape is bigger. Exactly. Thank you for volunteers, but their shape is bigger. Their profile got enormous. Did their mass change? No. We're assuming that the parachute was always attached to them. So their mass has not changed. If their mass did not change, did their weight change? No. Weight didn't change, so the force down didn't change. But their profile got enormous. You went from person to person with a parachute. <laughs> so what happened to their drag? It went way up. And all of a sudden, they're no longer at terminal velocity. They're traveling faster than their terminal velocity. Because there is all this drag, and that drag start slowing them down. If they have a weight down that is constant, all of a sudden a huge upward drag, in what direction will they accelerate? They'll accelerate up. And if their acceleration is up and their velocity is down, what happens when, it's, when velocity and acceleration are different signs? You slow down. Right? You slow down. When your velocity and your acceleration are different signs, you slow down. So that's what happens. You slow down. Fun fact. When you fire a bullet or a cannonball out of a gun or a cannon, do you know what's going faster than, the speed, than, its, than its terminal velocity? The bullet traveling out of the barrel, the moment it leaves the barrel, is traveling faster than its terminal velocity. What is the first thing the bullet does as it leaves the gun? It's a wall of air and slows down. It slows down. And it keeps slowing down until it reaches its terminal velocity. Because the bullet leaving the barrel hits this wall of air and immediately slows down and keeps slowing down, keeps slowing down, keeps slowing down until it gets to a terminal velocity. At which point the forward drag, well, beyond that, it's pretty long. Okay. Constantly slowing down. So that's the realm of momentum. Question so far. Okay. So from the top, Kevin jumps out of the plane. His downward weight is constant. What happens to his upward drag? Bigger, bigger, bigger. So his weight is constant, and his drag keeps getting bigger, 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 until they're equal. That's terminal velocity. He pulls a chute. What happens to his drag? It goes way up. And that causes him to slow down. So what happens to his drag over time? It comes back down, because he's slowing down. As he's slowing down, his drag is also being reduced until, once again, the drag is equal to the terminal velocity. So you have two terminal velocities. With the parachute, terminal velocity is fast. Fast enough to kill you when you hit the ground. With, sorry, without the parachute, terminal velocity is fast. With the parachute, Without the parachute, terminal velocity is very, very fast. Without, with the parachute, did I get it mixed up again? Okay. With the parachute, terminal velocity is slow enough that if you land correctly, you'll be okay. And you can go on your way. Invading Germany. Right. Let me ask you this, though. The drag at the first terminal velocity compared to the drag at the second terminal velocity, 
How do they compare? The drag at the first terminal velocity compared to the drag at the second terminal velocity. How do they compare? Exactly. How did you arrive at that the answer? Because the drag the same as Exactly right. Everybody hear that? She said the drag has to be exactly the same as your weight, and your weight was constant the entire time. So the two drags at terminal velocity are the same. The difference is one's a lot faster, one's a lot slower. But the drags are both the same as your weight at, at the two terminal velocities. Does that make sense? OK, cool. Hey, look, animation. OK, so our object in free fall has a constant weight, f equals mg. Drag upward until the two things are equal. The drag starts small and gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until they're equal. And when they are equal, the you reach terminal velocity. You pull your chute. When you pull your chute, well, before you pull your chute, this is important. So the terminal velocity, your forces are in balance. What do we call this? This has a name. Equilibrium. equilibrium. Excellent. When your forces are in balance, we call it equilibrium. Equilibrium means net force of zero. Net force of zero demands an acceleration of zero. Not can be, must be. If net force is zero, acceleration must be zero. And when acceleration is zero, you have a constant velocity. That's your terminal velocity. Pull your chute. Now you have that same weight, but you have a huge drag. And now you have a net force in what direction? Up. And as you slow down, the drag will be smaller. That net force will get, or sorry, that net force will get smaller and smaller and smaller because the drag will get smaller and smaller and smaller until, once again, they are equal. Until this drag with parachute equals this drag without parachute. Hey, look, it's an animation. So apparently this is me jumping out of the plane at 1,000 newtons. And I pull the chute and I have 2,000 newtons of drag. And that drag will decrease until, once again, my drag and my weight are the same. Acceleration starts at negative 10, and it goes up and then back again. OK? You better believe this is going to be on the test. this example, I think it made the math easier. In reality, um, it more than doubles. It's, it's a lot more. Because <laughs> you see how fast people like to leave the camera. You know, when you see the, the picture, and the just, it's gone. So I would imagine if it's not double, it's probably six or seven times as much. It's a lot. Um, it, it can't be so much that you would lose consciousness. Because most of us start to lose consciousness around five or six Gs. A G is 10 meters per second squared. So hopefully not so much you lose consciousness. Question and then question. Counselor, would it be possible in a parachute to keep moving as fast as you were originally? Like you could, like, no. Only if your parachute was the same size it was in the, in the backpack. Are traveling much, much faster than terminal velocity. Fun fact though, mass doesn't play that big of a role. Profile and speed and texture do. So if you if you're falling to your death and you want to make it a really spectacular death, roll yourself into a ball. Or give yourself turn yourself into a spike. You'll have a very small profile, you'll have the same weight pulling you down, and you'll have a reasonably uh, fast terminal velocity. When meteors enter the atmosphere, they're um, sphered. And they hit a wall of air, and they slow down very, very rapidly. But they pretty much stay sphered as they break up. So the terminal velocity of a meteor, I don't think it ever reaches terminal velocity when it enters in the atmosphere. It's probably slowing down the entire time it falls. It's also breaking up in little pieces, which is also another issue. But uh, yeah. I would imagine it never gets terminal velocity. Terminal velocity of a human being falling like this is about 100 miles an hour. Falling in a ball, about 200 miles an hour. <laughs> hey, look at graph. So here's your speed. And 
and uh, this is, you can look at what's going on. What happened here? You jumped out of a plane, and you're encountering lots of air resistance, a lot more air resistance, a lot more air resistance. Air resistance is starting to slow down because you're going really fast. What's this? Yeah. Terminal velocity, terminal velocity, terminal velocity. What happened here? You pulled your chute, and woof, lots of air resistance. You're slowing down, slowing down. And then what's here up in here again? Terminal velocity. Terminal velocity. Remember, the drag in both cases is the same. Speed's not. But speed's not. Thank you, David Burns. How's we're running? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Other comments or questions? All right. Okay. One of the most important devices that physicists like to work with are inclined planes. You actually worked with an inclined plane you had in the matchbox car uh, lab, but we need to talk about that. So consider, if you will, a plane. And by plane, I mean like a math plane, not a plane plane. Uh, <laughs> And the plane, on that plane, is sitting a mass. This is a horizontal plane that is sitting at zero degrees to the horizontal. There it is. What forces exist on it right now? Gravity. So, uh, Fg. What else? Normal force. Normal force we label as, how big is normal force? Same as gravity, okay. Why do you say it's the same as gravity? Yeah. I, didn't draw the, I didn't draw the international symbol for moving. I didn't draw little lines under it, so it's not launching, it's not falling. So uh, F and FG are equal? That's cool. Now consider the situation where we have a plane again. Let's consider a smaller plane. way of my other drawing. Okay. So uh, now we're going to put a mass on the plane. Give me one of the vectors that exists with this mass. Force applied? We're not, it's just, we're not going to push on it at all yet. It's just sitting there. Gravity. What direction is gravity? Still down. Okay. What else? Okay, some of you don't know what this is called, so I'll just, you're like, you're giving me the hand motion. You're like, what? Look at those mouths. Um, so I have my, my rock on my binder. And I'm going to move the angle to the horizontal of my rock. Is there a point at which it's going to slide off? Okay. What causes it to slide off? No, friction doesn't want it to move. Yeah, a component of gravity. And that component of gravity, we're going to call force parallel. And force parallel acts down the plane. F parallel. Yeah, F parallel. So, in other words, you know that there is a component of weight that causes it to drag. When I was doing my yard last spring, I had a wheelbarrow and I picked my wheelbarrow up and I gave it a good angle and the rocks fell out. They didn't fall straight down, they fell out at an angle. So I didn't have to get to 100 degrees or 90 degrees for them to fall. They were fast enough they're at an angle that they were just falling out of the wheelbarrow. Okay, there's two vectors. What's one more? Normal force. It's still not falling through the plane. So there's still a normal force. Normal force always acts what to a plane? Perpendicular, exactly. Normal force always acts perpendicular to a plane. So, in this case, normal force would be, pretend that's perpendicular. Perpendicular to the plane, of course normal force. That's not very perpendicular, Mr. Byers. I know. Pretend it is. Right. And if we 
want to put fr friction up there, we can. Do you want to put friction up there? Yeah. Why not? OK. What direction would friction be acting? Yeah. I'm going to give it a dashed line. So it would act opposite of force parallel. OK. Okay, now, back to our example over here. So the force normal is now equal to gravity, right? Okay. And gravity is what causes the block to move down the plane, right? So we can say that force normal and force parallel are both um, related to gravity. Because they are. And the angle's important. At zero degrees, boop, what is force normal equal? Gravity. Weight. So at zero degrees, force normal up equals weight down. What trig function when zero is equal to one? So the force normal in an inclined plane is equal to Fg <coughs> cosine theta. Force normal is equal to Fg cosine theta in a basic inclined plane. Some of you might have realized it's also right up there. And if force normal is Fg cosine theta, what's force parallel? Sine theta. Look, at what is the, the force down? What's the force parallel at 90 degrees? Gravity again. So at sine of 90 is what? Sine of 90 is 1. Yeah. So <coughs> at, uh, at 0 degrees, when it's flat, Force normal equals gravity. At 90 degrees, force parallel equals gravity. So force parallel gets sine. Okay. Questions? Now this works for about 80% of all the inclined planes you're going to have. That extra 20% you will encounter in more advanced courses. Physics AP if you choose them or college level physics, where you might not be given an angle that is right there. You might be given an angle somewhere else, or you might not even have something parallel to the plane. You might have something else. Let me show you something cool, though. Remember how we can move vectors parallel to themselves, and it won't change the vector? So I'm going to move this force gravity up here. Hey, look what I made. I made a right triangle. And if that's a, the right angle and that's the right angle, then theta must be up here. And if theta is up there, then the force parallel leg here this force parallel leg there. And if that's the case, then the force normal leg there equals the force normal leg there. And if that's the case, then the hypotenuse is force gravity there, and it's force gravity there. So these two triangles become similar or congruent. I get those two math terms confused. Similar. Okay. So when you look at this, then it goes, oh, this makes perfect sense. The opposite leg is force parallel. Force parallel is hypotenuse sine theta. All right. And the adjacent leg is force normal.
course, normal is hypotenuse cosine theta. Make sense? Pretty handy little thing. And you are going to encounter inclined planes uh, maybe as early as tomorrow. We're doing a lab tomorrow. In fact, I want to show you what we're doing in the lab. Are there any questions? Okay, cool.